What is up everybody? Jeff with Polar Pro and today I'm going to show you how to take long exposure aerial photos as we venture down Highway 1 towards Big Sur. We just launched a collection of long exposure filters for the Mavic Air and Mavic Pro including a 7 stop, 8 stop, and a 10 stop ND1000 that's going to get shutter speed super low for mystic aerial images. All right, so for long exposure photos, you are going to need a drone, some long exposure filters, and a subject with a little bit of movement in the frame. So I think a good place to start is with the basics of how shutter speed actually affects images. So let's send up the drone right here and take a picture with no filter on and see what it looks like at a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. So you can see with a shutter speed of 1 500th, it literally like freezes time. That shutter speed is only open for 1 500th of a second. That's like bam. So anything in frame is gonna be frozen in time. All right, so now let's send the drone up and take a picture with a 1 15th shutter speed so you can see the difference. Okay, so you can see in this picture that anything moving in the frame is a little bit blurred. And it's blurred because the shutter was open for a little bit longer. And during the time that it was open, you can see that wave moved a little bit in the frame, hence why it was blurred. So now let's send this thing up and take a very long shutter speed of four seconds and show you what that looks like. Wow, that image looks super unique. And you can see anything above like a one second shutter speed is gonna start to look really cool. Now at this four second shutter speed that we just shot, that shutter was open for four full seconds. So anything that was moving in frame is gonna have that kind of really ghosty and mystic look where anything that's not moving, like those rocks, are gonna be razor sharp in focus. And that's what kind of makes this composition look super intriguing. So hopefully you're starting to see that the longer your shutter speeds are, the more that the move, any movement in the frame is gonna have that kind of mystic and blurred look. So now you're probably thinking, Jeff, the shutter speed of my Mavic goes up to eight seconds, so I should always be shooting at eight second exposures, right? Well, kind of. So the difficult part is when your shutter's open for eight full seconds, you know, anything in the frame that's moving is going to be blurred and anything that's not moving is going to be razor sharp. But that also includes your drone. So if the drone moves at all in the air, it's going to destroy your shot. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if it's windy out, then you're probably gonna have to increase shutter speed a little bit just to make sure that your drone's not gonna drift at all while the shutter speed's open. And then second, take a lot of photos. The more photos you take, the better your chances are of getting that banger of a shot that you're looking for. So now you should have a pretty solid understanding of how shutter speed affects your images. So now let's go over how to get that shutter speed balanced when you lower it. So right now I'm going to lower my shutter speed to two seconds and holy shit, that's overexposed. And that's because shutter speed is staying open for longer, which lets in a ton of light. So what do you have to do? Reduce light. And how do you reduce light? Well, you can't lower ISO anymore. That's at 100. Aperture is locked. You can't do anything there. So the only thing left to do is add a neutral density filter that's gonna reduce light. So now you might understand why we have three different levels of neutral density filters. Because right now, if I want my shutter speed at two seconds, I have to reduce seven full stops of light, which is an ND128 filter. But say I wanted to use a four second shutter speed instead of the two second, which is gonna let in even more light I would need a darker neutral density filter to balance that exposure 
For example, that would be an eight stop ND256. So to recap, three different filter densities for three shutter speed options for you, the photographer, to decide what's gonna look best for each scene. So now that we've got the theory and the basics covered, let's go find a scene that's gonna make for a dynamic long exposure image. All right, so I really like this scene. We've got the bridge in the foreground. We've got the moving water, crashing waves in the background. It might be a little far, but we're gonna try it out anyway. I'm thinking like a two second exposure for right here. What do you guys think? Four second exposure? Uh, it doesn't look too windy, so yeah, maybe that'll work. We'll try it out and see if the drone can hold. To get exposure at four seconds right now, we're gonna need about an ND1000 filter. So we'll get that installed and see what this looks like. So that turned out really good. So you could kind of see the waves blurring in the frame in the background. And there was actually a lot of cars driving on the bridge at the time, but since the shutter was open for four seconds, it actually just completely ghosted and blurred them out. So it looks really cool and really empty. So let's go see if we could find another spot. All right, so I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. We've got the waterfall moving, we've got the waves on the beach, so this potentially could look pretty epic. I'm gonna use a two second shutter speed just because it did get a little bit windy and I don't wanna blow this shot, so I'll need an ND1000 10 stop filter. So let's get that on there. Let's see what we can get. Solid, that was exactly what we were looking for. That came out really sick. So now it's your turn to get out there and capture some epic long exposure images. We've got the links to these new filters below. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button because we've got a hyperlapse video next week as we continue our trip up Highway 1 up to Monterey. I'll see you then.